Yeah. Hello. Um, I want to show you today a little bit uh, what we have done in the last couple of years uh, in the newsletter area for Plone. We have uh, the add-on products uh, easy newsletter. It's actually there for quite a while. Um, but I want to show uh, you what we can do with it. You can use it uh, to send uh, emails to individual newsletter subscribers. That's the common way when uh, people subscribing by their own and unsubscribing like uh, you probably know. Um, there's another way you can also use uh, clone groups and uh, users. Um, that way you also have the possibility to use existing Active Directory or LDAP groups. Like in bigger organizations, this can be really handy to address like a group of people and send them uh, some emails. And you can also uh, use... Uh, uh, users from external services, so you can actually uh, pull subscribers from an external uh, um, delivery service. Yeah, you can uh, create con content uh, uh, an easy newsletter like the manual way, like just. Uh, like like you write content and clone like a, like a page or a news item, um, but more interesting, you can also automatically uh, aggregate uh, content. Uh, that means anything you have in your database, you can use for creating newsletters, starting with news items and just listing them. Or if you have more custom needs, then you can have your custom content types and create your own templates and just use all the data. Uh, you can use different layouts. You have output templates. This is basically like the frame around, like defining colors and stuff like that. And you have aggregation can te uh, templates, um, which define the structure of the automatically uh, aggregated content. So is it like a normal listing or is it something special? Um, you can customize it. Um, you can provide your own uh, templates. Um, that works uh, for, for the outbound templates, for the aggregation templates. Um, so you can write your own add-on. Uh, and install it next to Easy Newsletter and uh, register the templates and you can just use them in uh, uh, Easy Newsletter. I will show you later. You can even customize them through the web if you want without an additional product. Um, yeah, we have uh, quite a list of uh, placeholders like the date, uh, like the year, the month, the full date. Um, the names of the subscriber and, and so on. So you can use this uh, and put this in the templates basically on any place. So it's uh, it will be replaced uh, really at the really end before um, the email goes out. You can even um, uh, filter uh, um, or inject uh, uh, new uh, recipient, recipients or subscribers or however. So, for example, if you have clone groups or clone uh, users or LDAP users and uh, you want to realize some kind of filtering, like maybe you have, uh, uh, you used Membrane for the users and they have a uh, checkbox, I want this newsletter or I don't want it. So, uh, you you get the, the uh, first you get all the all the users, and then you uh, just use an external filter. It has nothing to do with uh, Easy Newsletter. Easy Newsletter uh, don't uh, uh, know your your structure, so Easy Newsletter doesn't know um, 
uh, your your membrane content and the field and stuff like that. So you provide a filter, which is a subscriber, uh, and uh, that way you can filter out uh, users and groups and also the recipients at the end. You can even send um, automatically newsletters, so you can uh, set up like weekly or monthly uh, creation or daily creation of um, of newsletter uh, content. So if you have a lot of, of content in your website, uh, like university, and you want to uh, send out like I mean a weekly list of uh, the new seminars of this week, you can really easily do it. Um, so there's a view for it. You just call it by cron job or use plon for cron, uh, a cron for plon uh, for it, and then yeah, we have some options to scale. Um, we have now an async support. This works uh, or can work with, uh, work with uh, Redis. Um, so it use uh, under the hood uh, collective task queue. Um, so if you want. Uh, you have like a big amount of emails, like 5,000 emails uh, to create and to send out, um, you probably want uh, to use a separate process for this. Um, I would say up to 1,000, it's okay to do it without. Um, but it depends on your needs. Um, you can even use external delivery services if you want. So you can create all the emails and, and set up all the stuff and use the internal knowledge and your internal data structure, um, which you probably cannot do from like directly from the outside services. Usually they support like SS feeds or something like that. So you have basically a list of, of some news items. But if you want to uh, go more in detail in your data structure, um, you need an additional integration for that. Um, so, but you still, if you have like 50,000 emails you want to send out, you probably don't want to do it from your server. So, no matter if you uh, if you're able to um, do it asynchronous, uh, asynchronous, um, it's just probably too much for your email service. It depends on your provider, but yeah. And uh, with this amount of uh, subscribers, it's also more important to have like statistics and better bounce uh, handling so then services like this uh, can. yeah the version free um, runs basically on all main supported versions so you can use it on clone 3 5 and uh, 5.1 um, I also uh, set it up some Um, here basically I have an example how you create a manual newsletter. Um, so you basically go add a newsletter uh, object which is the container and in this container you will add as much as uh, uh, you want uh, uh, newsletter issues. Um, this is some basic uh, stuff you have to set up so you have to you have to set up your email address and uh, you can also uh, choose the output templates. We provide two output templates already um, out of the box. Here you have some personalization uh, stuff you can set up. Uh, this is also like one of the placeholder which says then dear Mr. Dear Mrs. Um, there's the uh, placeholder for the uh, unsubscribe link. Um, you can also add uh, um, banner and logo images. Um, the logo will be uh, there for every issue. Uh, for the banner you can even decide on this issue I don't want this banner or I want a different banner. So you can add another banner for a specific issue you want to send out. Now we add an uh, issue and this time it's 
totally manually, so we give it a title, a description, and then we just use the tiny MC to write this stuff down. This is not the best uh, way to do it, because tiny MC is not made for producing emails. Um, and producing emails is uh, actually a really hard job if you want to have like rich emails like HTML with structure and all this stuff and then you look in Thunderbird, it looks nice and then you go to some other email clients and it looks like crap. Um, so we did uh, auto-generated uh, templates uh, using a structure which also uh, MailChimp use for example. Um, so that means basically a lot of uh, nested tables and uh, really old uh, HTML um, and CSS uh, definitions, so nothing modern. Um, but the problem is when you uh, use the tiny MCE to, to uh, do some stuff, then uh, yeah, you will probably mess up the uh, stuff. So we have to uh, configure the, the HTML filtering a bit to allow more of the old stuff. Yeah. You can here test the email, uh, the newsletter. So by default you, you set it up your test email, you can always change it and then you will send out. This is a extra preview uh, um, we just saw. Um, the advantage is it's without clone uh, wrapping it and also uh, uh, it shows you actually a uh, default placeholder like the unsubscribed link and uh, um, like a, a dummy name so you can really see how it looks like when the people get, uh, get them. Um, in the first uh, view you have only uh, the presentation so unsubscribed link you don't have because it's the presentation you have on the website. So, as you saw when I was uh, um, saying, uh, we also prevent uh, the sending out by mistake. So you have to enable it, enable it, and then you can press the send button. Otherwise, only the test button works. Um, and uh, yeah, here you saw um, that we have the archive with the uh, already sent out uh, newsletters, and on drafts you see the created but not uh, sent out uh, versions. So um, the next example is uh, the automatic uh, generation of newsletters. Um, always works on the second try. <laughs> so we basically um, uh, use the add aggregation sources. That means you choose some collections. You already know collections. So you can set up how many collections you want um, to uh, find all your content. And uh, we are iterating over these uh, uh, collections later. Um, to get all the items or the objects we want to show. And the aggregation template actually then uses like, okay, I have an item, I want to uh, um, render it like this. Uh, then we press aggregate content, and this will actually fill in the issue. So you can go on edit and, and see the whole content, but probably not uh, save it because the TinyMC will strip stuff out. Um, but you can see we have a nice uh, uh, listing. So we have actually f uh, three lists. You have the, also the title and the description uh, of the um, collections in it. And we render the images and stuff like that. That's the default. Um, we also can switch this. Uh, this time we do it directly on the issue, but uh, usually you would uh, say it on the newsletter container because you don't want to change this on every issue. Um, so we have another template, and when we use this and auto-generate again, um, then you can see it, it looks a little bit different, um, especially the, pi the pictures lists. So that looks a little bit nicer for pictures. 
ins instead of the just listing uh, the stuff. So um, that's just an example. Uh, for now, this template is a little bit more complex because uh, um, it actually has for the three different types uh, has different markup and has like conditions or oh, it's an image so this is the, uh, I, I ran it like this um, in the future we uh, want to make this a little bit more um, uh, yeah flexible uh, but we need to drop the um, uh, clone for support probably for that yeah, changing the output templates. Um, uh, as I said, we have also uh, by default two output templates. But if you want more, you, you can see the the footer is like mainly white, and the area on the top also um, is uh, like the color stuff. Um, and when we switch to the other one, then we have slightly different uh, color scheme and also uh, the footer has different stuff in it. Uh, by default we the, the, the footer is part of the output template so you just customize the output template and then uh, put your stuff in um, because there's no no good way to uh, to provide a UI for now uh, to create the footer um, that it looks like nice. Uh, we also have a list of uh, the collections in the top, as you can see, but uh, you it's your decision. Um, this is just an example uh, I did for a client. Um, if you have other ideas, then uh, strip something out or add something. So um, the last. Uh, will be a quick look uh, in the registry entries. Um, we have some entries in the clone registry, uh, which you can use from, from outside. So if you uh, choose uh, Products Easy Newsletter, you have uh, these uh, entries. And uh, there you can see we have an entry for aggregation templates for allowed content uh, aggregate content types. So for now we only uh, support collections, but it could be that you have another content type which works like a collection or like a list or like a folder. Um, then you can extend this. And here you can see we have a title and a, a ID of the template. The same for the aggregation templates. And the ID is just used uh, to traverse for the template, and then we use the template uh, for rendering. Um, I will also show the where the templates are. The good old portal skins. Um, there is the newsletter. And inside this, we have uh, aggregation templates, two of them. And also down there, the output templates. I clicked on the wrong button there. Um, so as you probably know, you can just click on it, customize it, put it in a custom folder, that would work too. If that is a quick uh, quick way to, to solve your needs, you can just do it like this. So um, here's one example. You really can customize uh, the, the content of the email. This is at the really end. Uh, so just replace any PHP with Python, for example. Uh, this is the, the actually data. And the first name and last name, this is like the receiver uh, um, uh, properties. So you can create something like uh, if there's a last name, then I want the salutation like this. like. If there's a last name, then it's dear Mr. Mike Derstappen. And if there's no last name, then say hello Mike. Um, something like that. So you can be really uh, creative uh, with that. For example, you see this first name, last name example. 
Um, and then just we just said uh, it's a normal subscriber like an event handler, um, and it will work. So we have a doc that reads the docs. Um, there is this customization stuff uh, uh, described in detail. Um, some words about the future. Uh, the we have on the list, uh, of course, a migration to uh, dexterity. So far, it's still archetypes, but it ma doesn't matter that much. Um, this will give us uh, a little bit more flexibility. Uh, we are thinking about uh, um, providing a behavior uh, which we can uh, enable on collections so that I can choose uh, these aggregation templates um, on every collection. That means I can have different aggregation templates, like for the cats. Uh, so I have like a completely different rendering for images for the, the collection which uh, collects this. And I have an, another normal listing for news items. Um, this, w this way we have just the template we need and not like a combination of template. Because if you want to customize the, the second uh, list of aggregated content, you have to customize the, the whole uh, template, which is a little bit more complicated. Um, yeah, that only works on dexterity, so in Bloom 4, it's not that easy. I mean, we will not go and, and uh, do nasty things like schema extender on archetypes. Uh, if someone wants to do that, uh, we could uh, still have the support for Plone 4 in the future, but uh, I would drop it. Um, yeah. One other thing. Uh, We are actually uh, thinking about the manual content creation story also, and uh, the only real answer is providing an editor like Mailchimp and Cleverreach uh, already have. There is actually one. It's named Mosaico, so sounds familiar. Um, and this is open source, uh, so we are thinking about uh, integrating this and. Uh, combining this with the auto-generated template, so that you actually, after auto-generating the stuff, you can customize it in like adding some blocks and some image parts and then just fill it in. And the markup you produce that way, even with the manual creation, is proven to work in the emails, uh, in, in email clients. Because we can, we can just figure it out what works, and then we can uh, put it behind, and you just fill out the, the content. Um, the structure will be the same all the, all the time. And you just com uh, combine them. Um, of course, this will be a bigger project. Uh, we have some uh, uh, interest from some clients to have this, but if you're interested in that, uh, it would be really helpful uh, if we have some more people uh, uh, begging this project. Um, so if you're interested, then uh, give me a note. Yeah, that's it. Any questions? Okay, there's any question? What about automating sending of the newsletters? Is it possible via it's cron job or? Yeah, it's the case. Uh, um, as I uh, showed. Maybe uh, I wasn't here, sorry. No, we have, you can have uh, like daily or weekly or monthly uh, newsletters. And what it does is it has a view. You call the view. The view will, uh, will just uh, use the, the collections. Uh, to aggregate content, will generate a newsletter issue and will send it out for you uh, to all subscribers which are subscribed to that newsletter. Um, so it's basically you have to define your uh, criteria, like 
find me all the news items for, from the last week, and then uh, it will send it out. And if you call it again, it will know I did already my job. So, and it, it, if the uh, collection is empty, it will also not send out anything. Mm. Okay, thanks. Okay, more questions? Okay, let's thank the speaker again. <laughs>